being drawn here in Battlegrounds. I'm Wally Weasel, and welcome to West of Wrestling. We are ready for Battlegrounds. Team titles. King Valentine, the enforcer for the council, has been teamed up with Moose, the next largest man here in Western Wrestling, in order to get the council back on top in some regard. The past few weeks have not exactly been kind to the council. They've lost the Vixens Championship. They've been attacked by the Evil Girls. And just recently, they've lost the Women's Championship as well. We're certainly hoping for things to change here. And it may just start right here. Valentine made his debut in West of Wrestling just last week in that Battle Royal. Lasting until the final three, only to be eliminated by Canuck. However, despite the elimination, nepotism is alive and well when it comes to the council. As the Cuban man has decreed that King Valentine has still earned himself with a huge asterisk, I suppose. A tag team title shot alongside Moose. He was just as quickly eliminated from that battle royal. Perhaps that's why Moose has lost the managerial services of Maple. No, and may have stepped in on that one. In order to gain proper control over Moose where no middle intervention. We will be seeing Maple later on at least, and perhaps we will be seeing Stephanie McMahon later on as well. In the Evil Girls. Council Challenge. Maple won't be involved in that. She'll be involved in being a great side for Frank Stevens when he takes on the arriving Judgment Day himself. But for now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the tag team titles on the line. Moose, King Valentine, set to take on Canuck and Cracker Jack, the Towers of Power. Of Canuck and Cracker Jack are the Towers of Power. One has to wonder what sort of name the Moose King collaboration would have chosen for themselves. I suppose we'll find out should they become victorious. As we now await the arrival of the champions. Who won their titles just prior to Money in the Bank, successfully defending them against Rough and Tough. Now, set to defend against a new union of sorts. My speculation, of course, was that the natural greatness would be challenging, but Tony J. Smith instead will be defending his million dollar championship. And we may see Roger Desmond at some point here tonight. He's still the Mr. Money in the Bank. So he could be cashing it in at any point, and the three count, signifying perhaps the end of this match. Now with the arrival of his partner, Cracker Jack. The lights go out, and we'll soon be bathed in red. Dragon Jack, who has been incredibly impressive thus far throughout his career here in West Ham Wrestling. Despite not having too many matches under his belt, he certainly doesn't have too many losses in that ranking. Hopefully this ring will actually survive 
the massive gathering of these four behemoths. Scratcher Jack makes his way to the ring, pausing only a moment. Surprisingly, he's got that belt around his trench coat. I think that uh, you'd have it on underneath, but... No, sir. It's right around. I wonder if Cracker Jack just happens to wear the trench coat all over the place and just puts the belt on over, not wanting to disrupt it. There we see what this is all about. The tag team titles. Ref will have a tough job on this one. And there they are, the representatives for the council, King Valentine and Moose. be interesting to see how they fare together as a team. It's King Valentine and Moose going over some last-minute strategy. And across from them, we have the tag team champions themselves, the Towers of Power, Canuck, and Cracker Jack. They are ready. They do not need to talk strategy. They know exactly what to do and how to get things done. Canuck has to be very proud. He has achieved his first major goal here in West Up Wrestling, and that was to avenge his earlier loss against Ranger by winning that Battle Royal. So that would be one less thing on his mind here tonight. Potential trouble for King Valentine and Moose. As we have King Valentine starting off against Canuck. Canuck certainly an imposing force. And just nails King Valentine straight down to the canvas with that one stiff shot. But King Valentine fighting back. There's Moose cheering on his partner from the ring side or the corner. Apron. Canuck showcases the power, but King Valentine shows us a bit of power himself. Knowing he was just going to get a rope break for that camel clash, just drops his entire weight onto Canuck's spine, and now Moose dropping the foot right across the back of Canuck. Nice little takedown there by Moose. Now he's going to try to... Oh, he just deadlifted Canuck. It's a bit of a wonder of between Moose and Canuck, who is the more powerful, as well as who is the most hairy. Locking in the camel clutch. Moose is a bit too fresh for that, however. Backbaker there over the knee. Hopefully the ring does survive this one. This is our first match of the night. Next match promises to be a bit lighter. Which will be a good thing, I suppose. And Canuck just whipping Canuck. Or Moose just whipping Canuck across the ring and now going for the cover. It's, it's a bit too early, though. I don't know. It's just the one count. I'm surprised he even got that. Knee between the shoulder blades and Canuck brought back to his feet. Oh, a nice tag there by King Valentine and down to the ground goes Canuck. Cracker Jack was hoping for a tag. This probably isn't going to be good. And double axe handle straight to the top of the dome there by King Valentine. Hard hitting DDT. Canuck crawling to the corner. King Valentine, though, stops him from making the tag. And, ooh, King Valentine down there with a straight shot to the jaw. 
Now Canuck finally managing to get that tag. King Valentine just runs right into the Gorilla Press. Cracker Jack power bombing King Valentine across all three turnbuckle pads. Trying to sit him up, but Canuck just, or King Valentine just falls back down. Still a bit dazed from those beating to the turnbuckle. Cracker Jack choke slam, gorilla press, and down with a backbreaker. But Valentine managing to kick Cracker Jack away. And all that weight once more dropped across the back of Cracker Jack, and I don't think the Towers of Power have ever faced anyone quite like these two. Valentine poised. Is he going to try for a power bomb? Running power bomb and ooh, Cracker Jack, the back of his head hitting those turnbuckle pads. That's not going to do you any good. And King Valentine going for the cover. Will this be it? Do no. Just the two count. No new tag team champions here. Now tag out to Moose. I say that Moose is going to pick up where King Valentine left off, but Cracker Jack dropping Moose with that takedown. And now Torquing in the neck. He's got a handful of that zebra mo mohawk. Now, once more, Moose finds himself in the hands of a camel clutch, this time by Cracker Jack, but just like Canuck. He's broken out of it, and now Canuck is tagged in. Cracker Jack, oh! Looks like Canuck tried for it. Oh, and then Canuck is busted open. And Cracker Jack still on the outside. Not the best time for Canuck. And the council could start things off here with a bang if they are successful in defeating the Towers of Power, which may just seem to be the point. Now King Valentine locking Canuck into the camel clutch. But Canuck powers out. Cracker Jack back up onto the apron. And Cracker Jack, or King Valentine's face colliding with the top turnbuckle pad there. It just dropped and pulled from the corner. Canuck's going to need to make a tag at some point. He said he wants to keep fighting, Ed. Oh, he's going to pay for it. And Cracker Jack fighting, or Canuck fighting back. Trying for a gorilla press, but no. Takes the shot, but it fires back. And a heavy scoop slam. And now a nice shoulder claw. Back over in the corner, makes the tag. So giving over some little advice, some strategy. Cracker Jack pacing around King Valentine, waiting for that opportune moment. Or perhaps he waited too long. And now it's King Valentine with the shoulder claw. Moose now tagged in. Cracker Jack still on the ground. And Moose going up to the middle rope. Driving down. Getting that elbow straight across Cracker Jack's masked face. And now, what's this? Cracker Jack, Chunk Slam, Backbreaker. And Moose managing to get away. 
Cracker Jack up on the shoulders and fighting back, fighting back. And Cracker Jack showcasing his strength. Just letting all the blood flow down to Moose's head and finally this duplex fall back. in there with the hard closed line and now he's got a hold of Crack Jack around the head but no Crack Jack managed to get out and once more he's got him up and another spine buster going out good for the cover this could be it Re title retention and no Moose manages to kick out Cracker Jack's going to try to slow him down. Cracker Jack needs to slow himself down as well. Taking a momentary break. Don't know who's worse for wear right now. Either Cracker Jack or Canuck. Cracker Jack locked into that camel clutch. He's got the ropes right beside him, but he's quickly to get out. You see King Valentine going for the cover, but we're from tag, but now the cover. And just the two count. Cracker Jack hoping to Put things away. Here we go. Choke slam. City all the way up and choke bomb. Moose dropped hard onto the canvas and now the cover. Will this be a title retention for the Towers of Power? And no, just the two count. Very close to a three count. Moose keeps this thing alive for the council. Now fighting back. Double underhook. Backbreaker. Cracker Jack attempting to come in from the cover of no, but stopped by Moose. Moose rampaging right through just for a two count. Well, Valentine and Canuck appear to be worn out still. Moose dropped back down. Cracker Jack may have to take, make a tag at some point. And now he'll be taking on the much more fresh King Valentine who comes in with a hard kick and another one. But Cracker Jack gets to his face and takes a third kick. Valentine throwing all of his weight. Still about worn out himself. He has some quick movements. And here comes Canuck. Wasn't necessary though. Cracker Jack managing to kick out. Jack fighting back. Choke slam. Go up to the gorilla press. We know what follows up this. It's a backbreaker. Valentine kicking Cracker Jack away. Look at that heavy chop and just tossing Cracker Jack around. And now here comes the cover, but. Cracker Jack quick to kick out. Cracker Jack really desperately needing the tag out. King Valentine wipes the sweat from his brow. And Cracker Jack's movements a lot slower now as he tried for that double axe handle only to be tossed around. Now dropped to the canvas. And Valentine going for another cover. Two and three. It's finally too much. As the council manages to take their first win here tonight. The 
Williams. That missed close on opportunity, but fired right back there by Moose. And despite the impressive display of both Cracker Jack and Canuck, we have new tag team champions in the form of Moose and King Valentine. The council could be going out of this one hot and heavy. Will this be a council night, ladies and gentlemen? Now it is time for the women's tag team titles. The Bella Twins getting another opportunity at the titles, basically their final opportunity. They went here tonight, they obtained a contract with West Ham Wrestling, they lose, and well, better luck in the other company. They did manage to make it to the finals, taking on both the current champions, Riley Everett and Ida Atsuko. It's quite the matchup in the end. Unfortunately, it was, or at least unfortunately for the Bella Twins, it was the Glow Girls who were victorious in that one. But things could change here tonight. Although given that this shot was given to them by Stephanie, it's a wonder if the Bella Twins are on the take for the council. in the weeks to come. Here comes one half of the women's tag team champions, Riley Everett. Who's had a very impressive career of her own. Either were trainees together, forming a friendship in the West Wrestling Training Center. Running through the independent ranks together, and now here in the main stage. And since their arrival, they have been taking West Wrestling by storm. Riley is looking to climb Mount Everett once more and acquire the, the win here tonight. Months, she has proven herself to be the queen of the tournament, the queen of the ring, the queen of tag team wrestling, alongside Riley Everett. Ready for this one. Which 
very impressive, her victory over Emily, catching the fiery fighter off guard with that s sunset flip. But that's what happens when you take your eye off the prize. Now, we'll have to get back to memorizing the Bella Twins. I believe that is Nikki with Riley in the corner. And Riley with the standing Hurricane Rana. And as I promised in the match before, this is a lighter affair. So hopefully we won't have to worry about any sort of ring collapsing. Honestly surprised that the ring is still standing after that last one. Hopefully it wasn't knocked off balance. And as we said during their entrance, the Bella Twins are fighting for a contract here. They win, they come in as the women's tag team champions. They lose, well, as I said, better luck in the other company. Now Bree comes in, face plant straight to Riley's face. Three up on the top, Riley in perfect position for the elbow drop. Already it looks like Riley will need to make a tag as soon as she's able, especially after that hard spine buster. Riley trying to counter there, but it's stopped by Bree. The Bellas certainly are trying to fight for for their careers, fight for their championships, fight to correct what I believe they may have thought it was a mistake. In the women's tag team tournament just some weeks ago, back on Canada Day. And now Itasuka, women's champion in the ring. What a feather in the cap it would be for either Nikki or Bree to not only win the women's tag team championships, but to pin or make Ida submit in doing so. Bree running right through Ida. We certainly know that despite Ida's vast amount of accomplishments here in West Side Wrestling, she is certainly not invulnerable, having lost that triple threat match involving Roxy and Queen Amazonia some weeks ago and losing to Emily at Money in the Bank. So the Bella Twins do know that the winged goddess does bleed. And now, ooh, Riley trying to clothesline Bree down, but runs straight into that forearm. The DDT certainly isn't going to help things, and the Bella Twins have been thus far dominant over the Glow Girls. And Riley unresponsive, you know, to save herself from that hefty shot. But, oh, clothesline to the outside, and it's Bree and Ida outside of the ring. Riley taking a well-deserved break before coming out to meet up with Bree. Nikki standing on the apron. It looked as though that Atsuka was uh, just about to come over to assist her partner, but Riley wants to keep this thing fair one-on-one. -on -one. That's where all Nikki isn't trying to get involved herself. Riley straight shot. Going up. Uh, Mount Everett. And now the cover. And the count. Two and no. Just a two count. Nikki had full faith in her sister. And it was well earned. Re countering out. Sending Riley to the other side. Quick tag to Nikki. Riley just thrown heavily into the turnbuckle pads. And Nikki up to the second rope. It's a bit too far. Riley able to get a fall away and make the tag. And now here comes the women's champion, Ida Asuko, with a hard kick to the face. And another one. Ooh, but this one is blocked. But another kick. 
And a clothesline sending Mickey to the outside now. The referee beginning the count to one. Now he has to restart. Hard shot there to the midsection there by Ida Atsuko. It's clear that Ida is not as merciful as Riley was when she had Bria on the outside. Nikki's face planted hard against the ring announce table. This is the fan ring announce table. And Ida with those shots, and Nikki with an arm drag. Perhaps it's enough to slow Ida down, and a Northern Lights suplex. Nikki heading up, makes the tag to Bree. The cover, no, just the one count. No, heading up to the top. And stopping both feet. Taking a page out of Mitsusaka's book with the Mitsusaka bunny hop. Now Bree up. Face plant. Eater's face eating canvas. Now the straight forearm right across the jaw. Hard shot there. Side rushing leg sweep. Looks like Bree is trying to incapacitate the any other ability of Edith jumping off the top rope. Showing off a little bit in the far corner. We're trying to reason with her, but not to be. I eat a middle rope. As Nikki and Riley watch on. Ida attempting a side drop or a missile drop kick on the side of the head, but misses. And now running Bulldog. Bree in the Glow Girls corner and a tag there. Double hip toss and a kick from either end. Just bookmarking kicks, and in comes Nikki. Running forearm straight to Riley, and another one. And a third. Nikki's foot catch this time, and Riley returns with a kick of her own. So the stop there with some leverage. As Riley's foot caught. Nikki's going to have to keep this thing alive for her team while Bree recovers on the outside. And Nikki with some yes kicks. And one final one across the side of the head. Trying for the cover. Two and three. The Bella Twins are victorious. The Bella Twins. New women's tag team champions, new members of the What's Up Wrestling roster. They have done it, but have they done it for the council? Or have they done it for themselves? It was, after all, Stephanie McMahon who gave them this opportunity. And we know that King Valentine and Boos are taking the tag team champions back to the council locker room. Will the Bella Twins be joining them? And a 
my sisterly high five. And welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Battlegrounds pre show. We have ourselves quite an event here for you. Starting off with Honey Rydell to take on the entirety of the Herald. Thankfully for her, it is not one on three or one on four, but rather one on one. Honey Rydell will face off against all three members, one after another. She will not just stop when she should she lose to any one of them. Or rather, she will continue on until all three Harrow members have had their shot at Honey. Now, contrary to having seen Anya compete last week, she will not be competing tonight. As we have guessed, she is retiring undefeated from active competition. A sort of trial that Anya is wanting to run, seeing Honey up against her harem. And of course, Honey wanting to just batter the harem away from her. She has no interest of becoming a member. Well, you never know because she may, of course, be impressed with what she sees. Starting off with Anya. Who is, of course, leading Katie Klein to the ring. Katie Klein will be starting this one off. And she is the undefeated goddess. Her one and only fight last week against Crystal Blake. The one could say that it was due to Zahara Madigan's star that Anya was able to seize victory as Zahara was there to cause the distraction. But regardless of how it went down, Anya is still undefeated. This is something that you will just have to live with, ladies and gentlemen. This is something that we live with here in West of Wrestling. Just a dark fact. And after relaxing in the corner, Honey Rydell is ready to start this thing off with Katie. See Anya still in the corner. Hmm. Honey taking Katie down. Don't know the sort of paycheck that Anya will be getting for her ringside services for three bat matches. Honey has to finish Katie off quick. And she'll have to reserve some energy for the next remaining two contests and this could be beneficial and Anya coming in from the side and they're trying to talk some sense into Honey oh and Katie's face ran right into the ring post and Anya's certainly not trying now Honey with the pitch maker. And he might try for a count out vi victory over Katie. That would still count. Although Katie managing to get Honey and herself back inside the ring. And he whipped into the rope and right into a Hurricane Rana. And a straight shot to the face. Honey is coming off a rather vicious victory over Kayo. One that Kayo actually took in good graces. Katie with a scoop slam. Katie haven't been in the harem almost as long as Atsuko. Joined shortly around Backlash. Katie up on the middle ropes. 
Honey doesn't see it quite yet. Now she does, but she's unable to capitalize. Her can run right off the middle rope. And he's taking a short breather, perhaps not really knowing where she is. Although she has enough of the wherewithal. And get doing the reverse DDT and now the double axe handle on the ground. Fighting back. Honey launched into the corner. Elbow to the face. Honey taking a bit of time to pose. That probably isn't going to help, but. Now Katie just choking out Honey. Luckily, only just briefly. Should remember that just because Katie has aligned herself into the harem does not mean that she has lost her vicious streak. And one has to assume that Anya just basically perpetuates it further. something in mind but Katie managing to get her off and now Katie not taking the chance off the top rope probably a smart move on her part instead we have the cradle power bomb bit different there Honey takes the finisher, but she's the one who goes for the pinfall. Duel of leg drops. And Katie just honey glazed honey. She just honey glazed honey. And two, three. Honey losing her first of three matches against the Harrow. There we see it, the Honey Glaze. Straight across the face. And Katie Klein victorious for the Harrow. Of course, Honey is not through here. She'll be next facing either Sasha Banks or Atsuko Mitsusaka. Katie taking some time to celebrate. Now it is Sasha Banks' turn, and she is just taking quick advantage of Honey's day's condition. I don't think she ex expected to be Honey Glazed by Katie earlier, and now Honey is down one nothing against the Harrow. As you said, she is going to continue fighting against all three members. Of course, if she were to lose against all three members, I imagine that she would presume that the Harrow is perhaps worth joining. In fact, maybe someone else will join as well. Although Sasha has only ever had two victories here in West Up Wrestling, is winning the Battle Royal to obtain her contract within the company. And then just a few weeks ago against Summer Holly Madison, the former Vixens champion. Sasha, who took the pinfall in that fatal four-way to Kayo. Now Honey up on the middle rope, trying for an elbow, and misses it. Actually, she got perhaps a bit 
We're landing on the knees. A bit of an awkward landing there from Sasha on the ropes. And we see Anya throwing in a steel chair. I don't think Sasha's going to be desperate enough to use that, but maybe Honey. Perhaps Anya threw it in there as a temptation to Honey. Trying to answer to her desperation. Yeah. Sasha Banks face hitting the top turnbuckle. Honey coming across the back. Now Anya up on the apron. Anya and Honey having a few words, and Sasha Banks coming in from behind. Looks like she was trying for a full Nelson. And Honey counters. And that's a sidewalk slam, and the chair has been thrown from the ring. Honey with a pretty powerful spinning heel kick, and now spinning on her own through that arm drag. Sasha got that rear naked choke. Yanking back hard against Honey's throat. Sasha sets against middle ropes. Manages to get to her feet. But now she's just lifted off of them. The backdrop. As I stated before in the last few shows, Honey has been dodging the rumors that her career has taken a dive due to her mentor, Kitty, being forced into the council. Some people stating that the careers have a spiritual holding. Honey not believing that. And now Sasha Banks with a neck breaker off the ropes. After having just spent time waiting for Honey to get back into the ring. And now kicks her in the spine. It's not often that you get to say that Sasha Banks is... Well, I was going to say that Sasha Banks is well on top of things. But now it's Honey. Quite literally on top of Sasha. with her frustrated hits. She still got one more member of the harem right after this to put away. And now Anya up on the ropes for apron. Sasha countering like suplex. Anya better be careful. She's going to be evicted from the right side area. Sasha tried for the double knee. There's the double knee from Honey as instead. And it looks like Honey wants to go for her Honey Glazed. And Sasha to her feet and she is Honey Glazed. Straight across the jaw. This could be it. Two and no. Anya pulling the referee out. But all Honey's going to do this is land a second honey glazed. That's all Anya ever managed to do. Was just set Sasha up for a second honey glazed. Two and no. Sasha managing to kick out after two. Two swinging Polish hammers. Sasha just barely on her feet. Taking the backdrop. Honey taking another chance off the middle rope. She wasn't successful earlier. But she gets it this time. Oh. 
Sasha trying to fight back. Just lands flat face and a spinning heel kick. And Honey could be going for a third. Yes! Just as Sasha gets up. That's three honey glazes. That's going to be it. Two and three. And it looks as though Anya was trying to rile up the crowd to cheer on honey there. So now honey is one for one against the harem. Honey still has one more bout left to go. Just taking a momentary breather as Sasha exits the ring. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Honey Rydell is one for one against the Harem. Taking on at Suko Mitsusaka, who has been with the harem since the very beginning. Honey will look to do some quick work here, putting at Suko away as fast as she can. Honey with a distinct showing of athleticism. there for you. Uh -huh. Honey already having some words there with Anya, and Anya nodding in agreement with something. It's super coming in from behind. It almost seemed like there was about to be a contract signed in between the two, but Suka stopped any of that, and Anya celebrating at Suko from the outside, so I guess it wasn't much of anything, but Still never know. I don't know, getting to her feet. And Suko just driving both those knees right into Honey's face. And Suko sent to the outside, but managing to duck, kicks his gut. And knee straight into Honey's face. Trying to use some quickness, but it's Suko, the Oni of the harem, managing to out maneuver her. Let's take a little kick to the back. Trying for a. Oh, she was trying for a scoop sign, but nope. Dropping Honey's neck right onto the top rope. And now just pulling back hard. Again, underneath Honey's chin, but Honey managing to roll herself out. But Suko just keeps up the assault. A tornado DDT and now just striking a pose. Anya on the outside just loving that. But Honey firing back, arm drag. Shots in the face and a DDT. Ah. It should be noted that once more, even if Honey loses this match, this does not automatically put her in the harem. means that Honey lost the score of 2-1 to one against the Harem. Of course, if Honey manages to win, that will not deter Anya from trying again to get this Honey into the Harem herself. And 
Now Honey relaxing in the far corner. Taking a breather. This is her third matchup in a row. Now a straight shot knocking Atsuko to the outside. And Honey goes to join her. So there was a hard kick to the side of the head. Now Honey set running into those steel steps. You heard the sound echoing around. And again. So you can see that Atsuko just missing the ring. Gets it that time. And Mitsusaka. Mitsusaka driver. Far corner of the ring, but she manages to get the pinfall here. And the count, two, and no. Honey getting the shoulder up. Honey's fought too hard and long. To just lose it in the final here. And Honey's setting Atsuko up from the top rope. The top rope has not been kind to Honey or her competitors in this matchup. Backflip slam there. Honey lounging out in front of Anya. Perhaps not the best place to be doing it. And Honey with a sudden spinning heel kick. Now Asuka with a surprising suplex from behind. Going for the cover. Will that be enough? Two and no. Just a two count. The referee seemed to know exactly what was going on before it even happened. And Mitsusaka tried for the Mitsusaka bunny hop. But it's Honey managing to roll away. Sheer display of athleticism there by Honey. And Honey with a sudden clothesline. Let's see now with the cover. I doubt she's going to get much of anything. Two and just the two count. We've seen screwier finishes in the past here in What's Up Wrestling. And Honey looks like she's about ready to put this one away with Honey Glaze. And yes, Honey Glaze straight across Atsuko's jaw. And there's the cover. Here's the count. And no, Atsuko with the shoulder up. No victory just yet for Honey. Honey beckoning Asuka to her feet. And top rope deck breaker. Trying for the sweep slam, but she's unable to. So we're trying for the belly belly. And over the towns and ducks the honey glazed. And it's a suplex there by Atsuko. Knee to the side of Honey's head. And Suko getting Honey up and yes, a second Michisaka driver. And now the cover. Will that be it? Will Suko be victorious here tonight? And yes, and Suko victorious here tonight against Honey. It is two for one for the harem. See the first of the two Mitsuko drivers. The 
thought it was over there. And the second, the second Mitsusaka driver. And Asuka with victorious for the Harem. Will Honey rethink her standing with the Harem now? And at least in this one, we know the council has no involvement in. It is the Billion Dollar Championship. Wild Child activating his rematch clause. We'll be taking on Tony J. Smith. Wild Child just a couple weeks ago losing the title to Number Guy, who then lost it just last week to Tony J. Smith. Very hard fought matchup. So, this one should be interesting, ladies and gentlemen. As Wild Child makes his way to the ring, it has been decided that the next title will be the World Heavyweight Championship. Of course, not to be confused with the Universal Championship, but she'll still remain the main tier title. All the universe is bigger than the world. So join us in the coming weeks for a tournament to determine the winner of that one. And there may in fact be a few special guests throughout that tournament. Some members of another roster hoping for a chance. It looks like Number Guy is coming out as well. Is Number Guy and I'm hearing it now, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, Number Guy has indeed cashed in his own free match clause and will be competing in this now triple threat match for the Million Dollar Championship. Which is perhaps for the best. Get these rematches out of the way. Whoever walks out will continue on fresh. Number guy, we're always ready for our fight. It took a lot to take him down. We now await the arrival of the million dollar champion, and there he is the natural Tony J. Smith. hard-hitting career that this man has had. It was only a matter of time until we saw him with gold around his waist, or at least now in his hand. This feud between Tony and number guys starting back at Money in the Bank in that Money in the Bank ladder match. Two men fighting it out throughout damn near the entire thing on the outside. Only to continue their rivalry into a match the following week. Leaving both men bloody. Finally it culminated to the million dollar championship last week with Tony J. Smith walking out the winner. And now things seem to be continuing on here at Battleground. Dollar champion. Ready for this one. And that's what this one is all about, ladies and gentlemen. What's the wrestling's official holding the belt up high? See Wild Child, Number Guy, and Tony J. Smith. All of them are ready for this one. Number Guy taking his. Short little detour around. Now coming in heavy strikes on Wild Child. And now running right through Tony. 
This one will continue until there is a pinfall or submission. We determine an undisputed million dollar champion, Wild Child calling on for a fight and now number guy gives it to him knee to the face number guy the last man standing that is if you just count the uh, referee A little double underhook backbreaker there by wild child and number guy rolls to the outside just fighting a bit too hard at the beginning I doubt number guy will be gone from this one for long as Wild Child and Tony J. Smith trading the momentum. I'm going to try for that suplex, getting the knee to the head. Wild Child stalking in the, by the ringside, coming in and taking out Tony. Tony whipped to the other side. Wild Child misses with that low drop kick. Grabbing in number guy before he can come in. And Wild Child putting out a bit of basic mat wrestling. Now going for the first cover while Tony is preoccupied on the outside. Really another champion taking down the former champion. Sending the shot straight to the face. And backbreaker there by the natural. As number guy still sits there. Steadily recovering. Knees to the face. And Tony being called over there by number guy. And number guy countering out with a northern light suplex. Just a one count though. And Tony rolling to the middle of the ring. Now number guy with an ankle lock. Ankle lock on there by number guy. Wild child on the outside. Stomping up the hold. Trying for a straight shot, but no. Brain buster there by number guy. Now number guy laying a wild child next to Tony J. Smith. Wild child to his feet. Knocked into the corner. And just folded right back up into it. Number guy once more. The last man or the last competitor standing. And now number guy going for the cover. Will that be it? Two and just the two count. Tony J. Smith unable to even respond. But he's up to his feet now. All three men back up. And Wild Child just close line right out of there. I think Tony meant for number guy, but number guy ducking down. High angle slam by natural. And now the cover. Will that be it? And just the one count. Nice little trap suplex there by Tony J. Smith. Wild Child still recovering on the outside. He's got to get in soon. And another high angle slam by the natural. Now number guy fighting back. Kick and there's no SDO there. And Wild Child has a steel chair. Wild Child with a steel chair. He desperately wants the title. Clocking both of them. Who wants up wrestling rules? There are no disqualifications. It isn't something we have to deal with often, but Wild Child seems to be a master of the rule book. And now after that guillotine, going for the cover, just the one, or not even the one count actually. Now what's Tony got planned here? Nice little uppercut beneath the jaw. Number guy from behind, trapping the arms and dropping Tony's face first onto the canvas. Now going for the cover. Will that be it? Surprising Tony from behind, but no. Of 
Perhaps now the question could be between the two of them, which one of them will be busted open first. If we even get to that point, but we may just still. While Child's still recovering on the outside. Back inside the ring. Child trying to come in from behind. Oh, drop kicking Tony right up against Number Guy. And now a straight shot. Number Guy in the corner kicking himself out. And backdrop right on top of Tony J. Smith. And now the cover. Both men down. Two. And Wild Child just managing to kick out. Tony J. Smith making his way to back to his feet. Wild Child sent to the corner. Number Guy taking a moment. Coming down. And Wild Child has been busted open by that running kick. Now Wild Child needing a moment to the outside. Needing a moment to break. Cutter by Tony J. Smith. Cover. Number Guy quick to kick out. We should note that steel chair was yet to be put away back under the ring. And Wild Child, a bloodied Wild Child, coming back into the ring. Straight shot to the face. And now it's a brain buster. Number Guy going for the cover. It may have been a mistake for Number Guy. Did Wild Child come in? Yes, it was. Number Guy taking back the title. Number Guy, a two-time million dollar champion. Number Guy, victorious here. we saw the earlier brain buster. And number guy, victorious here tonight in Reno, New Nevada. He is Mr. Money here. Why does he look so damn pretty? Why does he smile so fucking awesome at me? And the Vixens here in What's Up Wrestling, not to be outdone. We'll be having their own triple threat matchup for the Vixens Championship. A situation that was masterfully crafted by Stephanie McMahon. Cyclone and Lilac had been pitted against one another in a number one contendership match, a table match, no doubt. Cyclone won that, but then it was decided by Stephanie that both women will be gaining their title shot. This, of course, a response. Both women stood in the corner of Roxy when she defended her newly won Vixens Championship against Kitty just a week after Money in the Bank. Now their friendship, the friendship of these three women, will be put to the test when a title is rested against them. Hopefully no egos are driven out or driven upwards in this one. Here comes to the ring Lilac, a finalist in the Queen of the Ring tournament. Who's out to eventual Queen of the Ring? Ida Azuko, although it was a very impressive matchup. Later on, Cyclone and Lilac teamed up, trying to win the women's tag team titles in the women's tag team tournament, only to lose in their first matchup. However, things could certainly turn around for the spunky vixen of West End Wrestling. Here tonight, she can walk out of here with the Vixens Championship. There she is, the woman who first started turning the tables against the council, defeating Summer Holly Madison at Money in the Bank for this very championship. Council has been on a losing streak, although recently it seems that the council has been turning things around. They 
will certainly continue to turn things around, ladies and gentlemen. Next up, as we as they take on the evil girls in the team versus team gauntlet matchup. here tonight in this triple threat scenario. As here's what this one is all about. The coveted Vixens Championship. Free certainly having a workout here tonight. You see Cyclone ready for this one, Lilac ready for this one, and Roxy obviously ready for this one. And Roxy coming in, Lilac catching Cyclone from the side. Fisherman Powerbomb there. Roxy seems to just be letting the two of them fight. But coming in now from behind, and Lilac catches her. Northern Light Suplex. But perhaps the speediest woman in this matchup. Especially with maneuvers like that one. The cyclone with a hard kick to the side of the head. And Roxy is still out of it, needing the ropes. Or at the very least, just using the ropes. All the counter with the STO. Cyclone rolling to the outside. This could be a very dangerous situation for Roxy as she does require time in order to pump up the catnip prior to her kicks. So with two women involved, said it could be very difficult for her to even get it in. A little double team move. But no teams in this one. Contrary to what these three competitors might want. The Cyclone standing moonsault. Hanging up on the top. And what's she aiming for here? It's attempted leg drop number one. Cyclone misses, rolls to the outside, and is Lilac in charge of this one. Going for the cover. Not even a one count. Oh, was Cyclone out of the ring? It was the perfect time for her to try. Lilac with those devastating elbows. Both women up. Cyclone taking the chance. Breaking up the cover, but... Or tie up. Just barely managing to get Cyclone top of the head. And now the jawbreaker. Roxy now dropped onto her face, and it is between the two teammates, Cyclone and Lilac. Both women trading blows. And a hard shot there beneath the jaw to Cyclone. And now Lilac with the cover. Roxy realizing what she could lose. Now, ooh! Twin kicks. Roxy pumping the catnip. Kick to the side of Lilac's head. Going for the cover. Cyclone steadily up to her feet. Double axe handle dropping this pinfall. And Roxy's snapping suplex. Trying for another spinning kick. Misses. Shots on the side of the head. Now Roxy with those repeated forearm shots to the back. And now going for another cover. Two and no. Just the two count. I doubt Cyclone would have been able to break up the cover anyway. A 
And Roxy running in with a Hurricane Rana taking Cyclone down. I don't think she even knew. Oh, side kick to the side of Cyclone's head. This could be it. Roxy retention and just a two count. Roxy so close to finishing off this one. Roxy pumping the catnip. Kick to the side of the head. Here she goes with the cover. Cyclone or Lilac has a view. And just comes in at the end. But Cyclone manages to kick out regardless. And now Cyclone, very impressive, getting up. Kicks to the side of Roxy's head. So many kicks in this one. Roxy needed to roll to the outside, taking a momentary breather. Lilac off the middle rope, double axe to the back of Cyclone's head, and Lilac standing Hurricane Rana. This could be it. New Vixens champion. Two, three, yes! Lilac, new Vixens champion. It was perhaps unfortunate for her to have to defeat her own teammate for it. But Lilac has finally achieved what she has dreamed of for the longest time. Lilac is the Vixen's champion. Hopefully again, this does not do anything to sour things between these three women. The Vixen's roster needs a team to take on the council. But Lilac for now, taking her well-earned celebration. And it is now time for the Evil Girls Council Gauntlet Battle. Four members of the council set to take on the four members of the Evil Girls. And as we stated before, Summer Holly Madison will be the first competitor for the council. A bit of a punishment for her recent inabilities inside of the ring. First losing the Vixen's Championship to Roxy and then losing to Sasha Banks. As a result, Summer will be taking on the Evil Girls' Lana Star here in the opening moments of this matchup. Kitty, of course, not here to play cheerleader as she is will be an active competitor in this one. And some are already calling out Lana Star. Wants to get this thing underway. As we await the arrival of Lana. And there she is. Lana Star walking through the smoke. The woman who brought in the evil girls. The figure who, until just recently, had been playing a more of a background role for bringing in both. Cindy Sullivan and Bessie Miller. Eventually they were able to either turn or Spice was in on it all the, t all the while. But getting the dominatrix herself into the evil girls. Is 
taking a snap out of the crowd. Those watching at home. Who knows whose blood she's wearing right now. But she's definitely craving more of it. Perhaps she'll be coming away with Summers. Perhaps the first time ever that Summer is hoping for a long night. But it's not exactly going to continue on with when you're getting your face crushed against the canvas like that. Lana with a clear power advantage over Summer. Although a lot of the women here in West of Wrestling could have that claim. And even though the council has five members, they have stated that they're willing to only put in four. Even though Emily is now currently available to compete, having lost her women's championship just last week. Stephanie is still giving her the night off, and as we see the athleticism, can't exactly see any more than that. But we can safely assume that Honey or Summer is not missing any of her strikes. We cannot say the same for Lana. What a way to go if Summer were to have been counted out. I think her membership within the council would have been put right up to question. And Summer crawling for the ropes. Just barely managing to get herself up. And now she's sent right back to the outside by Lana Starr with that hard clothesline. Summer's spine hitting against those hard mats. So we're using her athleticism to counter out. Doing her absolute best to keep up with this one. Free up to seven now. Both these women have to get back into the ring. So we're just enough time to smash Lana's face into the announce table, but now it's Lana coming up with a hard assault. Summer on top of the diving cross body. That's not where you want to put Summer. Milano with that big boot. Running right through or Summer. And I'm just stopping her down. And a hard hitting DDT. Summer's just bouncing off the canvas. Summer trying for recover. Will she get the three? And it's just the one count. Atlanta with a uh, face rake. Turning things around, but speaking of turning things around, Summer flipping Lana down.
Summer getting her patented back heel kick. The ladder managing to kick her away. She's going to keep fighting in this one. And now Lana with a running big boot straight into Summer's face. Will this be it? And no, Summer keeping the council alive. Lana with those hard shots. Summer firing back. Spinning heel kick, knocking Lana into the corner. Summer with a very rare showing of strength there. Far surprising even herself. Summer going up to the top. Is she going for her twisting splash? And no, just standard, but she misses. Connects with nothing but the canvas. Now DDT to Lana Star. And Summer pumping herself up. We still don't know the lineup of these two groups. Who will be coming out next on either end? We know whoever will be coming out will be coming up at a bit of a disadvantage for their team. Someone with a side effect. Quick cover. Will that be enough to get the three yet? No. Someone now showing a bit of frustration. Instead of trying to go for blind sight and then she gets it blind sight. Will that be enough to put Lana Star away? And yes, Summer Madison will continue on. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. After managing to get through Lana Star, Summer now. Advances to take on Betsy Miller, the second member of the Evil Girls, who comes right through Summer with a s solid big boot. Summer fighting back. That's the little flip, leaving Betsy's ass up in the air. Summer with a hard kick to the chest. She knows she's not going to be able to do much damage with Betsy in her porcelain mask. And Summer getting all of that leg drop. But none of that Hurricane Rana. And where exactly is Betsy going? This looks to be having some troubles on the outside. Some of Betsy's demons had come back to haunt her. I don't know, but I think Summer was laughing at her during that time, too. Probably not the smartest thing to be doing. Especially when considering the woman you're laughing at is Betsy Miller. Out there, and Betsy continue on those heavy strikes. And dropping that elbow, piercing it against the sternum. I see him from behind with a neck breaker. Now, Summer stealing the move herself. Okay. 
And Summer's face was coming against that hard porcelain mask. And now Betsy taking Summer to the octopus's garden with that octopus stretch. And Summer fighting back and high, high arm drag. Summer with his Delta Whirl arm drag there. A surprising show of strength there by Summer. Managed to get Betsy up on the apron. I don't think she's going to be able to do much from that distance. Summer perhaps having some second thoughts. Or at the very least, just waiting for Betsy to come running and perhaps Marley comes down. Don't know why she didn't just climb down earlier. And Betsy with that hard uppercut, barreling, burying those claws of hers right into Summer's throat. And this could be it. Two and no. Summer managing to get that shoulder up. Bit of a desperate kick out there by Summer, but Summer trying for a jawbreaker, though I don't know. Nope, you saw it. It didn't really do much of anything. And basically sending Summer straight to the outside. Now coming out to join her. just how hard it can hurt to be a, the receiving end of anything on the outside. Doing your best to counter out and now sending Betsy into the ring. Following right behind her. Betsy was trying for something there. Off the apron and now something with the side effect. Quick cover. This could be it. A free with the count. Two and just the two. Someone really wanted to put this one away quick. He's sitting somewhere up. Trying to suplex, but Summer Cup captures the leg. Suplex of her own. Summer a bit slow to get up. Summer unable to get into the corner. Perhaps a bit dazed from all those shots with the porcelain mask of Betsy's. Hold it, but I guess he wanted to go for blindsight instead. Will she get it? Yes! Betsy falling straight back, and this could be it. Two and no! Perhaps thanks to Betsy's porcelain mask, she is able to kick out of blindsight. Therefore, our summer just focuses on the arm. Bulldog and just a hard shot there by the mask. Summer fighting back, back into a side effect. From behind, hard backdrop. DDT and a cover. Getting her for the quick distance. No. Summer heading up to the top. She could be going for a twisting splash and twisting splash from the top rope. 
And that could be it, ladies and gentlemen. Summer could be advancing two victories over the Evil Girls. And no. Another fake three count. Lots of those lately in West Up Wrestling. Benzie fighting back. Going again for that octopus's garden. Summer was able to arm drag her way out of it before. And once more she's able to get out. Summer trying to go for an uncharacteristic power bomb and she paid for it. May not have been the smartest move for her to try and make. And Betsy with again. And what's going on here? Is, is that Sasha Banks? It's a little hard to see. And yes, it's Sasha Banks. What the hell is Sasha Banks doing out here? And why is she out here helping Summer? And Summer with the side effect. And victorious here with a surprise entrance by Sasha Banks. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. It is Summer Holly Madison to take on Cindy Sullivan of the Evil Girls. This summer has thus far run through two members of the Evil Girls, as you've seen before. Although, against Bessie, she did have help again from Sasha Banks. It's a bit of a question as to why Sasha came out here to assist Summer, especially when she was so close to losing. Perhaps some sort of alliance between the Harem and Evil and Council? Perhaps Sasha feels like she owes Summer for managing to defeat her. Maybe Sasha felt that Summer basically held back and allowed Sasha to beat her. And therefore, she just returned that sort of favor. Hopefully, we'll have our answers on that soon. As Summer and Cindy continue to wage battle. Now, Summer up on the top. Standard splash right off the top rope. That's just a hard kick. But Cindy already trying to get to her feet. And Cindy with that short arm clothesline. Cindy, the true powerhouse of the evil girls. Definitely on display, but Summer managing to kick her away. So now we know that as we have Cindy out to the ring, Spice will be the final member of the Evil Girls, and Summer damn near spearing Cindy to the outside. Looks like Summer wants to go to the outside. And she does it, yes! Her and Kimron are off the apron and now a standing moonsault. So the referee starts the count again. I see Nick clubbing. Hard against Holly Summer and just sending her straight to the outside with that knee to the face. Summer countering out. Ah. 
West Indy with that fireman's carry getting Simmer back up to her feet. Simmer just tossed away and a headbutt to the shoulder. This could be it. Will it be it? Summer eliminated and no. If there were a member of the Evil Girls who could dominate all the way through the council, it could be Cindy. Cindy just stomping down repeatedly over Summer's face with Summer fighting back. For the cover, will it be enough? And it's a spinning back kick now to Cindy. That is three for three with the spinning back kicks, and Summer can feel it. Definitely get her in, back in Stephanie's good graces if Summer is able to defeat all four evil girls by herself. Although, with a little asterisk there, she'll have to do a little more now against Cindy. I'm still only kicking her away, going for a cover, but she's not going to get much of anything. Surprised she even got the one count. She's getting that on a surprise to Summer. And Summer giving no moment of reprieve here. And Summer once more thrown across the ring. Another headbutt and another cover. Center of the ring. Referee running to put in a good position. Two and no. Summer kicking out. And Cindy's just waiting now for Summer to get up. And cross arm neck breaker. Just kicking at the back of Summer's knee. That's just a straight headbutt. And Summer returning the favor and now trying for yes, arm drag. And Summer trying for a cover. She knows he's in trouble with Cindy. She's going to try to put her away as often as she can. Somewhere up on the top, twisting splash time. And no, she's waiting for Cindy to get up to her feet. Cindy up and Hurricane Run off the top. Now Summer with a double axe handle. Summer is definitely feeling it and no, Cindy pushing her away, stopping her momentum. STO from Cindy Sullivan. Will that be enough to put Summer away? Two and no. Summer keeps up the fight. And Cindy on the middle rope. It's not exactly familiar territory as we've seen. Summer managing to counter on there. And Summer again with that spinning back kick. Summer feeling a bit woozy. And now the cover. Two and just the two count. Summer really wants to put this one away. And twisting splash. This could be it. 
three count. And no, Cindy. Cindy once more manages to kick out. Summer now just pure frustration. Referee just constantly getting in the way. And so we're getting yourself out of that DDT. Standing moonsault. Some of those leg drops in the nether regions. Someone retreating to the outside. Cindy taking a moment to recover. Summer again with that spinning back kick. And trying again for the cover. Will this be enough? Two and no. The only thing Summer hasn't done yet, or try at least, is blind sight, and she could be trying it now. And she gets it, blind sight, foot under the jaw. That could be it, that should be it. Summer advancing to the final member of the Evil Girls. And surprisingly, Summer has made it to the finals here. Spice will have an uphill battle. And she hopes to secure a victory for the evil girls. Summer, the first woman in. Managing to eliminate Lana Starr, Bessie Miller, and Cindy Sullivan. All after hard-fought battles. These two we haven't seen go at it since Summer was calling herself Blink and fighting for the Vixens Championship for the first time. Perhaps the Summer can manage a clean sweep against the Evil Girls. She'll definitely be back into Stephanie's good graces and perhaps even rewarded with the title shot. She will have to get through the leader of the evil girls, Spice, and that is no easy feat. And some are up to the middle rope. A rolling senton. Now going for the cover. She's not going to put her away just so fast. Sure how the other members of the council feel about not being able to fight just yet, or perhaps ever. Well, I'm sure they don't mind. And Summer with an uncharacteristic amount of strength. Once more. Summer truly doing everything she can to get herself back into the good graces of Stephanie, and with a hurricane runner like that, that's going to help. And it's a back heel kick to every member of the Evil Girls. And Summer going for the cover. Two and three. Summer making quick work of Spice. Summer victorious, a clean sweep over the evil girls. Can you believe it, ladies and gentlemen? There will be a good amount of celebration in the council's locker room. And there we see the twisting, the rolling, the all over the place heel kick to the top of Spice's dome. And the council victorious here against the evil girls. Though we still have no idea about Sasha Banks.
the long wait is finally over. Two months of warnings that Judgment Day would come. And Craig Stevens is here alongside Maple to accept it. Craig Stevens has not had the start of career he was hoping for. At least he started off strong, taking out Moose in both of their debut matches just following just a few months ago. And has since taken his valet, Maple. Although the speculation now is that Maple was actually given to him by Stephanie McMahon, or at least set up that way. Either way, Craig Stevens is here, and he is open to facing the judgment. And here it comes, ladies and gentlemen. Judgment himself. The living end, Blith Omega. We have been warned of his coming. You see, Alexis King, his advocate, standing in behind. Man is just a massive mound of muscle. Standing ready. Ready for what? Ready for destruction. And there he is. He is ready to go. Craig Stevens may regret accepting the judgment call. Mega giving Craig another chance. Craig is ready for this one, warming up on the outside. He's willing to accept it. Cliff entering the ring. And here we are, ladies and gentlemen. Craig Stevens, Blith Omega. This one's just starting off in the wrong way for Craig Stevens. And hard suplex there by Blith Omega. As Maple watches on helplessly from the outside. Now Craig just. Craig managing to. Drop Blith to the outside. A surprise to say the least. And Craig fighting back. Fighting a back against this behemoth. How many behemoth can we take into What's Up Wrestling? Even Alexis King is getting involved. But Craig managing to work his way around. up to six and Bliff just pounding away at Craig sending him face first into the ring post and again referee up to eight both men finally back into the ring and Craig trying to fight back And just a hard throw there by Blith Omega. Honestly, it was thought that Craig would just be done by now, but the man is fighting back hard. And all that pressure put along the thigh, and Craig fighting back, kicking at the top of Blith's head. But it doesn't seem to be worth it. Hard, and just throw it from the corner. And Maple, all she can do is just try to call on her man. 
Now covered just the one count. Lithuania up on the middle rope. And double axe handles to the top of Craig's head. And Craig utilizing it as a weapon. He's going to use his speed, try to take down the big man. Do what he can. And surprisingly, he's getting in some decent offense, but fighting back. You're almost to the midsection. Now Craig up onto the shoulders. Guillotine off the top rope. And now Blith going for another pinfall. Just another one count. Yeah. Maple trying, trying her best to keep Craig into this one. German suplex. And another German suplex. And a third German suplex counted out by the fans. Craig going for what he knows best. He's actually got Bliff teetering. He might actually win this one. It's a little neck breaker there by Craig Stevens. And now, now it's the arm drag. And Craig just dropped hard onto his back. And both Omega just standing over top of him. And what's this? What is this? Judgment Day. And now the cover. But Maple, Maple up on the apron. What are you doing? He's just going to keep Craig from... Finishing this match, having this match ending mercifully. And Craig Stevens has been busted open. All thanks to Maple's intervention. But again, you never know, Craig Stevens could come away victorious. The blood could be a driving factor. Craig Stevens. Fighting back hard. Once more sending Bliff to the outside. Maple patting her little cat paws together. Although Craig a bit too posturing a bit too much. And Craig Stevens trying to fight back. Snapmare there to Blith Omega. And another one. Lux King this time keeping her distance. Reaching out at Craig Stevens. He was actually still willing to get physical. Of course, saw her in an exhibition match some weeks ago. Referee now coming up to eight. And it's Craig Stevens who sends Blith Omega into the ring this time. And oh, just a hard clothesline. And all that momentum is gone. And now another cover. Two. And Craig Stevens with Blithamega just dancing it all off. Everything that Craig Stevens is throwing at the man. And Craig Stevens fighting back. Drop kick, sending Bliss down. Elbow drop after elbow drop. Maple applauds.
Ten elbow drops. Craig Stevens getting all of it. This could be it. Craig Stevens, will he be victorious? Will he stop the judgment? But Alexis King up on the apron. Craig Stevens has thus far surprisingly been impressive, keeping up with the man. And now Flithamega just sweeping out Craig's feet from under him. Now Flithamega once more to the middle rope. Driving that knee straight into Craig's skull. And again, the German suplexes. Maple tries to cover her eyes. Craig Stevens slowly, bit by bit, brought him to his feet. And close line, no. Craig tried to duck the first close line, took the second one. And now, close line were cross body. Craig Stevens taking both of them out, and Maple quickly escapes to the side. And Craig Stevens shutting over at Blith Omega. Flithamega sent back into the ring. Maple returns to her spot. And Craig dropping the leg to the back of Bliss head. Taking the big man down. Craig Stevens going for another cover. Will this be it? Flithamega down. And no. Blue Omega sent to the far corner. Craig Stevens, he's feeling it. Bloody face and all. He's got his own dreams and aspirations. Here's the count. Two. No! Just a two count! Two count for Craig Stevens! He can't believe it! This should have been it! Now Craig going to the middle rope. Off the middle. Knees to the face of Blith Omega. Running off the apron. Double axe handles the knee. Now stopping down on the other leg. Craig Stevens, he's in savage mode right now. Full savage mode, be enough. Craig Stevens packaged DDT, but he's a bit worn out. All that blood. He's got to put Blith away at some point. Blith countering out STO. And now again with the Germans. That one shocking even Maple. And a knee to the side of Craig's head. And once again, Judgment Day, middle of the ring. Blith down to a knee. And now the cover. Maple doesn't realize she's trying to get the fans to support. And it works. Craig Stevens, Savage Mode activated once more. Bringing the big man to the top rope. 
But Blythemega fighting back. Sending him away. All that weight coming crashing down once more. Plythomega with a hold of Craig's arm. And even Maple can feel it on the outside, but Craig, Craig fighting back, shot to the midsection. And trying for a knee, but no, just a powerbomb counter from the corner. Craig Stevens fighting, hit. Dropping Blith, but he probably got more of it than Blith did. Trying again for a cover. Will this be it? Craig Stevens victorious? No! Craig Stevens. Rear chin lock. Power slam by Blitz Omega. Two and just the two count. Stevens is not going to go down to this newcomer. Just because you've had two months of build-up does not mean anything in the eyes of Craig Stevens. And a power bomb, and just lifting him. Two power bombs, and the power of Blith Omega. Three power bombs. And Craig now just sat up and a kick to the spine. And up on the shoulders for a third time. Three judgment days. And Maple watching on in horror. Two, three, and that is the end of this one. Craig Stevens putting on a hell of a show. A absolute hell of a show. Unfortunately, it just was not to be. Savage mode, Craig Stevens. Defeated by the big man, the living end, the judgment day, Blith Omega. For the final time, ladies and gentlemen, Sahara Madigan star, Catalina star, will be taking on the page turning centerfolds. Stephanie McMahon has decreed that this will be the feud ender. This is essentially the winner take all matchup between these two teams. thing has gone on from before Money in the Bank straight through that event straight through the women's tag team tournament and now it comes to an end at Battleground suffice to say the Sahara has kept on hold of this one for quite some time although Crystal Blake has certainly done her fair share of keeping things alive between the two women between these two teams between all of them. Sahara Madigan Star. 
is set to once more team up with her wife to take on the PTC. Sahara has done everything she can to get on top of Crystal. Only for last week for Crystal to turn the tables and take out Sahara who attempted to attack her from behind. That's the advice of Catalina Starr to Stephanie. This will be, as I stated before, the final time, at least for now, that these two teams will be set to compete against one another. Here they come, PTC, Page Training Center Folds, Crystal Blake, Harper Maloney, Harper, of course, the Miss Money in the Bank. While they're watching that lap earlier, we need to fix this championship match quite closely. Catalina starting things off with Crystal Blake. As we see Paige standing on the outside watching the two of them. Things seem to be going on a slower pace on this one. The PCC are basically known for slowing the pace of their opponents. There must be something in the air, those sort of pheromones that they release, and now Crystal doing a little dance, sending Catalina back into the met, the star corner. I guess we could call it. We saw these two exact teams facing each other off in the women's tag team tournament just a few weeks ago during the Canada Day celebration. At that point, it was Catalina and Sahara victorious over the Crystal Blake and Harper. Catalina Star is set to the PTC corner. Quick tag there between Harper and Crystal, and just a straight shot to Catalina's exposed ribs. As Paige cheers him on from the outside. Catalina whipped across the ring, comes back with a jawbreaker. Running right into a fireman's carry. Hard hitting suplex. Harper up onto the middle rope. As Catalina crawls to the corner and Harper just seemingly lets her tag in Zahara. And Zahara comes running through with the clothesline. And again, telling her that, um, that she's not interested in doing the slow pace thing and now getting into an argument with Paige on the outside. Harper taking advantage of that one. Dropping Zahara's face hard against the canvas. Kicks of the gut, whipping Zahara around, knee in the midsection. Now Harper forcibly bringing Zahara down to her side of things, her speed. Now, ooh, power bomb there. Now Harper running. Elbow drop straight across the jaw of Zahara. And Harper going over to the corner. Middle rope. Landing that elbow drop. This is the fist drop just pounding away as Zahara lies there. Sahara countering out there. 
Trippings Harper down to her back and a stiff shot. And Harper just dropped hard onto her face. So they are taking some time to try to get the fan support. Harper crawls her way to the ropes, but gets nothing but a hand to the throat. Interlocking DDT and connects. Harper's face bouncing off the canvas. Those rabbit ears doing nothing to keep herself steady. And just a two count. Have to wonder what sort of headband that Harper uses to keep those rabbit ears in place. Probably something similar to that Maple uses for her cat ears. And now once again, Zahara choking out Harper. Zahara misses with this one. That one straight kick to the side of the head there by Harper. And now tagged up to Crystal. And these two women certainly are no strangers to one another. Zahara with a running drop kick there. Catching Crystal across the face. And Crystal sent into the star corner. Quick tag there between the two misses. And that's Catalina getting a revenge shot against the exposed ribs of Crystal Blake before close lining her down. Crystal manages and thinks really counter with the jawbreaker. A nice twisting fist to the side of Catalina's face. Well, Crystal's making a quick tag out to her partner. Thankfully, Paige has done nothing but stand to the outside, giving some moral support to her two trainees. Managing to counter out there from behind. No. Catalina quickly to her feet. That's a combination there by Harper. And Catalina back up. And knee to the face. And Catalina back into the corner of the PTC. And another exposed shot. Catalina's just being dissected by the PTC right now. Doing all she can to just keep up with the fight. And Crystal sent to the corner. Little tag team by the stars. Hip drop. And quick kicks. Something similar we saw from the Glow Girls earlier tonight. Before their un unfortunate defeat at the hands of the Bella Twins. And we have word that they have officially signed their contracts. They are now Wessel Wrestling competitors. Here once more with that DDT, middle of the ring. In comes Catalina. Two. Oh, and yes. Sahara and Catalina. Catalina rushing right through Harper, managing to take her down, stopping her from stopping the cover. And in the end of things, as good as it could be for Sahara, picking up the pinfall victory in this tag team matchup over Crystal Blake, the woman who started this whole thing for her. The PTC doing what they could against the Sahara and Catalina. And at the end of everything for this long time feud, it is Sahara coming up on top.
And it is now time for the Universal Championship, our main event. It has been a long, hard road here. This one is all about the Universal Championship, the top tier title of this company, despite the oncoming arrival of the World Heavyweight Championship. Because as we said before, the universe is far bigger than the world. And there we see him with the title. Universal Gold draped across his shoulder. And there, for some reason, we see a WWE rock sign. This is not WWE. This is What's Up Wrestling Federation. Get your signs right, you fans. Know where you are. And are you ready for this one, ladies and gentlemen? We are just waiting for the bell to sound. Just waiting on the referee. And here we go! Door killer running out, taking Jamie Hill down. Jamie Hill quickly taken down to the canvas. Stops there now by Door Killer. Last time he underestimated the spectational one. This time, he's not going to make that same mistake. Although, Jamie Hill, perhaps realizing this, keeping up his own fight. He's fighting to prove the naysayers wrong, that he deserves to be at the top. However, missing that, and now being sent straight to the bottom by the door killer. Close line to the outside, and the door killer going underneath for a sledgehammer. And now he's going to meet Jamie, and oh, he tried to hit him in the kidneys with that hammer. Now Jamie Hill fighting back. 
That arm drag, sending Jamie's ankle into the steel steps. And this one is Extreme Rules, ladies and gentlemen. Therefore, there will be no countouts. Dark Heller working on that knee, and Jamie Hill using his quickness. And the cover, and not even a one count. But the Universal Champion had to try. Nice little takedown there by the champion. Another door killer up, and another takedown. Now, door killer rolling to the outside. He needs to rekit. He needs to rework his attack strategy. Trying again for that sledgehammer. Killer just dropped onto that ring, that barricade. And Jamie's back, colliding with the apron. Steel steps beating flash. And that exchange, obviously, Steel would win. So Dark Killer cutting along his throat. DDT. Will that be it? Referee down, making the count. Two, just a two count. Now the Dark Killer poised, ready. He's going to end this one. Dark Killer coming. Dark Killer coming in. Dark Killer connects. Two time Universal Champion here. Ladies and gentlemen, here we go. In the count. One, two, and no. Jamie Hill managing to kick out. Jamie Hill rolling away, taking the shot into the corner. Dark Killer has him up. Now just pounding away on his head. Pounding it like a bongo drum. Now yelling down. He wants Jamie up to his feet. If Jamie's not going to come up to his feet, he's going to bring him up belly to belly. Don't kill her with the suplex. Now trying for the scoop slam, but no. Jamie Hill counters DDT. And Jamie Hill can feel it. There we go, clothesline. And now, inverted atomic drop. But that's not all. Double leg drop. Between the legs and a front drop kick. Incredible combination by the Universal Champion. And now dropping him, taking a page out of his... Link's book out of Summer Holly Patterson's page book. The Dark Killer fighting back, however. Jamie rolling out onto the apron. Perhaps not the best place to be. Dark Killer stalking, trying to spear, but Jamie Hill with a kick. And Jamie Hill kind of pulling himself right back in, throwing himself at the challenger. Jamie Hill up on the top. Twisting splash. Twisting splash. Here it is again. Twisting splash. And now the cover. Will this be it? Jamie Hill walking away. Universal champion two seconds away. And no. Almost. Almost. Jamie Hill 
Looks like he might be trying again. Calling for Dark Killer up to his feet. Falsing off the rope. Crossbody. Oh, Jamie uncharacteristically going at a slower pace. Perhaps needing a breather. But knows not to keep the Dark Killer down. Or at least out of his sights. DDT. And a second DDT. And yes, we see it. Blood on the Dark Killer's face and a drop kick. Further opening him up. Further opening him up. Nightmare from behind. Jamie Hill going for the cover. Will this be it? And just the two count. This one, ladies and gentlemen, capable of going either way. And Jamie Hill, he's going to the top. Another twisted splash. No, he's he's shouting for Dark Killer up to his feet. What has Jamie Hill got in line? Driving drop cross body. He perhaps caught too much air. Confused there, slurring a shot, but Dark Killer managing to counter out. Too much momentum, too much excitement for the Universal Champion. And now Dark Killer taking advantage of that cover in the corner. Two and just a two count. We could be celebrating Jamie Hill if he had a landed that crossbody. But to no avail, now he's taking a double axe handle to the top of the head. Dark Killer sitting him up, kicking him hard, and kicking him again. Now there's that knee to the back. And Dark Killer celebrating. Celebrating perhaps a bit too early. You aren't the champion yet. And Jamie Hill there to remind him of that. Jamie Hill attempting that power bomb. He's not exactly known for it, but he did the biggest power bomb in West of Wrestling Federation history. And there's the grounded arm bar. When Jamie Hill power bomb Ranger through the table like King of the Ring, he turned all eyes on him. And now DDT, middle of the ring. This could be it. Will that be it? Will this be two-time Universal Champion? And yes, startling DDT, middle of the ring. Dark Killer wins. And we saw the Dark Killer back when we thought that this would be it. Jimmy Hill putting up a hell of a fight. Getting in the twisted splash. Unfortunately for him, it is the Dark Killer who is victorious here at Battleground. Two time Universal Champion. The man is ready to once more reign supreme. What's up, wrestling? We thought the battleground would end here tonight, but no, it'll just continue. The battleground will keep going straight into SummerSlam. We hope to see you there, ladies and gentlemen.